Some have called him the undeserved great mathematician, Nicomachus of Gerasa, who wrote the Introduction to Arithmetic, or the original text, pardon the pronunciation, Arithmetike Isagoge. He wrote the standard mathematical text for arithmetic, basically became the standard for study for the next millennia, thousand plus years. His was the first work to treat arithmetic as its own topic, uh, specifically different than more of a fundamental understanding of it from geometry. Um, so this is entirely basing it off of numerals and integers, but it is a comparatively short book. The work is composed of only two books, each with its own separate sections, each consisting of various arithmetic principles. It contained, notably in it, the first multiplication table in a Greek text, and pretty important, it contained Arabic, not Greek, numerals for representation. And obviously, as we come to the modern day, the Arabic numerals are used. Uh, unlike the previous Greek uh, geometric mathematician, Euclid's work, Elements, Nicomachus provides no abstract proofs of his theorem, except for listing off a few examples. And so this is an example of the huge shift of understanding from deductive to inductive reasoning and why it's important to provide a theorem with your mathematical work and why there's so many errors in Nicomachus's work compared to something like Euclid. And I have an example to go over for that with you right here. So in his book, uh, Nick Marcus states that perfect numbers have parts equal to the whole. So, for example, in 6, that equals 3 times 2 times 1, as well as 3 plus 2 plus 1. And he also states that they are always even and end in 6 or 8. So both of these are true statements. They're both correct about what perfect numbers are. He just makes an incorrect assumption about uh, the nature of them. Basically, what he goes on to state is that the nature of perfect numbers off of what he knew uh, in summation here. The nth perfect number has n digits and ends in 6 or 8. So ending in 6 or 8 is still true. That's, as far as we know now, up to 2020, all perfect numbers do end in 6 or 8. However, this first claim here, that the nth perfect number has n digits, is absolutely false. So. At Nicomachus' time, the four proven perfect numbers at that point, were proven by Euclid, were the numbers 6, 28, 496, and 8,128. So just a casual look at this, you'd see that the number of digits in each of these. Uh, 6 has 1, so the first perfect number here has 1 digit, the second, 28 is 2, 496 has 3, 8,128 has 4 of them. So it's pretty clear that Nicomachus simply used deductive reasoning to assume that any perfect number would have that nth amount of digits in it. It just hadn't been found yet. And while looking at this, if you were just doing, say, a serious calculation in calculus, uh, I would honestly make that assumption if I was looking at something like that. However, it turns out to be really, really wrong. The fifth perfect number is actually 33,550,336. Clearly that is not five digits long. And it goes to show that Inductively proving something is a huge step for the process of uh, how scientific and especially mathematical knowledge was passed on. Uh, Nicomachus is important because he's the only prominent mathematician, or at least surviving works of a mathematician, um, going on for about a thousand years, at least f for arithmetic. And for such a large volume of time to be... Uh, encompassed by a deductively proven work in most instances, where others are just based off of the assumptions already proven by Euclid, um, it goes to show how mathematics really evolved over time. And while Nicomachus is a key figure, uh, it should be 
demonstrated that there is a significant shift in the proofs of mathematics over time. So, to conclude the errors in his work, Arithmetike Asagage, uh, at times it feels like Nicomachus is just using deductive reasoning with a few examples when stating theorems. And this is obviously a standard that would make you fail any modern-day mathematics class. Uh, so it's an important distinction that the standard ar arithmetic text for over a millennia was based off of deductive reasoning. Now, this isn't to say uh, that there weren't critics of Nicomachus. The strong figurehead of that criticism was Pappus, one of the last great famous Greek geometric mathematicians. So while Nicomachus's work was not remembered for its accuracy, his work stood the test of time until the steps of the scientific enlightenment were reached. Nicomachus, uh, <laughs> Nicomachus was remembered by the famous Roman poet Lucian when he uttered in one of his plays, quote, you calculate like Nicomachus, end quote. Nicomachus achieved acclaim as a renowned mathematician despite his mystical proof of numbers. So in conclusion, Nicomachus's work was more popular with philosophers than mathematicians. Heavily influenced by his predecessors, Pythagoras, Aristotle, and Euclid, Nicomachus conveyed and expanded on their influence, but didn't use inductive reasoning when proofing his work, resulting in much error. Introduction to arithmetic certainly carried on the fundamentals of math for over a millennia, but it goes to show how rapid our understanding of mathematics has been since the 1500s and the scientific revolution. Alright, so thanks for listening in. Uh, this is from Project of the Nicomachus, and I'll probably keep looking at middle age mathematicians as we go on here. So thanks for checking out the sketch. And I got that.